And I try to abstain from anything that's not, that I don't have biblical precedence for. Oh boy, that's going to work well. It, uh, you can call me, y'all. If you can part of this house, you can call me. It's not in our Bible. Paul, if Paul was who he is, he would have told us, right? What was he? Well, Apostle, Romans 10, 9, and 10 is a sinner's prayer. No, it ain't. It's not a sinner's prayer. They made it a sinner's prayer, but it's not. It's actually about the Word of Christ. It's, a, it's about a nature. It's about making sure our priority is right. But it's not necessarily anything that would cause you to go into penitence. Okay, let me move on. Okay. See, we've been so polluted, man. We've been so conflated. We, we accept anything that comes down the pipe. We just say, and I've been there too. But I've been in the season of detox for at least 22 years. And so certain things I have to look at it through scriptures. And I know where it came from. The sinner's prayer came from Catholicism. It came from the mother of harlots. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we need to be quickened. We were discussed that, right? We need a quickening. So part of regeneration is the quickening. Being exposed to a level of being quickened in our being. Where prophet was speaking about the germination of the seed that's sown. Remember? I mean, know there's a germination in you. That germination has to spring forth. It has to come into fruition. There is something that has been placed within our bowels. And this is why it's necessary for us to be able to, and I almost was going over, I had some other places, uh, you know, when I looked at the seed, and I think I'll do seed later, but that uh, it got me excited, and, and uh, Elder Gary messed me up and put that on uh, in a group about, we have the same seed. Yeah. You know, I mentioned that, and that's why I kind of pulled off of it on last week, because this, that's a whole new principle, that's a, that's a principle that we need to be able to hear. I taught on it a long time ago. The seed must come to full term. That was the title of the message. Mm -hmm. The seed that we carry must come to full term. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And anything that God's going to do has to first come by way of seed. Because yes. that's the law of reciprocity. That's the law that's in Genesis 1 and 11. Every seed will produce its own kind. That's why it's important for us to make sure that if we belong to a certain church or denomination, we've got to make sure that seed is right. Yes. Because within the seed is the boundary. It's the blueprint. It's the definition of whatever the harvest is going to be. So if I'm mm. in a church and, th and that house is a storehouse of seed, then if it has uh, a, a, a religious connotation, that means that whatever is coming out of the sower, that's my boundaries. That's my limitation. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. So everything's going to be spoken concerning that level of understanding, right? Mm -hmm. yes, that particular style of seed. Y'all understand what I mean by that? Because uh, uh, yeah. there are some churches, if you go in there, they're still speaking some of the things they spoke 20 years ago. Can you read the news? And yeah. Exactly. So we need to be endowed with a, a spiritual power. Then we went over Titus 3 and 5. It says, not by works of righteousness which, we, which we've done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the watch of regeneration, renewing of the Holy Ghost. We, we spent an enormous amount of time. But if we were to put it all together... And look at this thing, we'll find out God is commissioning us to a radical change of mind so that we can proceed to the original state of perfection. In the meantime, while we're proceeding to the original state of perfection, there is a recovery of knowledge. And we cannot recover the knowledge that has been assigned to us from the foundation of the world, from things that Father hid within himself. That knowledge alone should cause us to consecrate to God. You can have knowledge independent of your relationship with God. How many know that? Mm -hmm. You have data and information, but I'm talking about inside knowledge. I'm talking about epinosis, not just Gnosis. We've got a lot of Gnosticism in the church. If you ever study the word of Gnosticism, that was the problem in 1 John chapter. We were talking about, and one of the things that they denied is that he said Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Right? They weren't talking about the historical Jesus. They were talking about Jesus continually coming within the flesh of people. And so our 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 litmus test is if the knowledge I carry doesn't bring me into manifestation that's the problem 
Boy, it's tight. I feel like it's a bottle neck, but it's the truth. Because we in this church, we have the luxury of being inundated with concepts and teaching and thoughts. Not independent thoughts, but just thoughts that's outside of the spectrum of some circles we've been exposed to. And maybe even some of the preachers we like, we have a tendency to hang out at on Facebook in their timeline and all this stuff. But uh, we need to uh, do some things differently. But anyway, we said as well that uh, uh, the renewing, remember? We said the renewing is a complete change. The word is anachronosis. We said it's the complete change instituted by the Holy Spirit. So the things I'm sharing and going to be sharing, I've always shared, I trust the Spirit of God in me, and I believe it is the change that is being instituted by Him to bring us to a level of maturity. Yes, sir. So that we can be changed, the last part of that, to be changed into a new kind of life. Anybody want a new, a new kind of life? Yes, sir. I want the life that God appointed to me. Amen. I don't want any less than what God has said concerning me. That's why prophetic ministry is important. Because it gives us the, the signpost or the guidepost as we take this journey called life. And every moment you can reflect on it. Amen? Amen. And make the adjustments accordingly. Then we looked at, we dissected the word and we found out that that word Anna means a reversal of what was previously there. Well, actually, it means to be in the midst of, to be a mist or a mon. It, it is a directional connotation of upward. So Anna has to do with being up. There's some words, in, and I can talk about some Greek words like katabano and all these different type of academies down and, you know, any, you know. Uh, so it's upward. How I many you know that there's a summoning for us to come up? Not to go up, but to grow up. So it's, it's, it's an expectation from God for a measure and a stature and a fullness. Even when you get a cup and you put something in the cup that's going what, down or up? <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. So we're looking for things to be fulfilled. Yes. Yes. Right? So yes, when you get into regeneration, uh, uh, things become fulfilled. You start looking in your life and you say, my finances are being fulfilled. Yes. My marriage is being fulfilled. My singlehood. Because you can't be single and be fulfilled. Amen? Yeah. There are things in your life that can be fulfilled, fulfilled, or fulfilled, or feel full. <laughs> <laughs> Whichever way you want to float it, twist it around. Amen, yeah. please, obey with it. But <clears throat> this is something the Lord told me. He said, it suggests a reversal of what previously was there. Remember I mentioned that? It's a reversal. It's funny because even repentance is a reversal. Uh, 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 repentance is a reversal of opinions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when you look at these words, you find out that most of the words, even though they're, uh, the etymology is different, the Greek structure is different, but it's still talking about reversal. So I, when I stumbled on these thoughts, I'm like, dang, God really wants us to get back to, <laughs> to the original pattern. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? We have to return. Remember Jeremiah 6 and 16 said something? Remember Jeremiah 6? Let me get on the screen so we can give you a scripture before we move forward. Oh, I already gave you two. Is this strong? There's some things, some ancient past that God is looking for us to participate in. Is that Jeremiah 6 16? I just thought about it. Yeah, it's amplified. Give it to me in the. Uh, unless you like it like that. We <laughs> I can float with I can float with you. Yeah. yeah. It says, Yeah, thus says the Lord, stand ye in the way, seek and ask for the old path. Where is the good way? And walk therein, and you shall find rest for your soul. But they said we would not walk there. You get that? That's what we gotta start asking. God, I want the old path. I want your original intention. That's what old path means. What was the blueprint? What was the, the, the landmarks? What was your intention? Amen. When you formed Christ and planted Him in the earth, what was your intention? That's how I read. I read and say, God, what do you mean by what you said? 
Remember we talked about that, because that's where faith comes from. I had, to, I had to find out what was his intention. What did he mean by what he was saying? Not just what he said, but what he meant by what he was saying. And that's a part of comprehension. How many of y'all read the Bible and ask questions? Oh, you just... You just <laughs> we go... Our Father which I in heaven, how would be thy name? And that's it. Then we quote from uh, Matthew 6, uh, 9, 6, 9 to 13, and that's it. But we got to ask God, what was it, your intentions of making that statement? Why did, did uh, Matthew pen it, and why did Jesus say it? Right? Okay. Well, let's get back. It's one of the things Apostle Tim told me when I first started talking to him. He told me, he said, I would know the ancient past. I, that's one of the things he told me. He said, you would be a man that would understand the ancient past. And I, I, that just connects on what I shared with you last week when we went to uh, Detroit and the man of God said, I'm tired of life. So we've, on this journey, charismatic in particular, has inflated and conflated a lot of the information. So now what we're finding out we're purging out the old lump so that we can get this new lump. I don't know about you, but I want to purge out the old lump. I want, I, I want the new love to come for it. Amen? Okay. So, we said these things. And, oh, I almost left out kenosis. We said, so we need to come up. We need a reversal in the way we used to think. So we got to get our perceptions to change. But kenosis means to renovate, bring about a newness of freshness by intense and repeated operation. So, even in this teaching, there is a freshness being brought by an intense, repeated operation of the Lord in our lives. So we don't get weary in well doing. Huh? I heard that before. No, no, we need the Bereans to come in this place. We need the Bereans. I mean, no, Bereans is important. Y'all ever heard about those people? I'm just saying. I prayed it enough, said it enough. We need to get that Bereans. Not only were they searching the scriptures to see if it be so, but you have to understand the word Berean, what it means. It means to pierce. It means well watered and pierced. It means to take you to the other side. So the reason why they were being brought and educated in the things of the Spirit, they had a they had a willing mind, and they searched the scriptures readily. So God allowed it to be put in station for us to look at to find out. When I'm a Berean, that means that I'm gonna be not only well watered. But it means to be pierced through a cross beyond the other side. So it's a people who are being formed by the word and the spirit. A people who was going up beyond the limitations of their own carnal mind. Shaking out of a slumber. Out of a stupor. And bringing us into the process, the spiritual process of regeneration. This is why we say regeneration is the element of our spiritual process. It is a part of our consciousness and awakening to be loose from the dust of this earth. <clears throat> there are dust elements in the church as well. Oh, so We think dust has something to do with just uh, uh, the works of the flesh. There are some dust elements to our teaching as well. It just covers us. There are certain teachers that just covers you, empowers the outward man. But in the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Ghost, we know it's inner work. It's an internal job. Jesus rebuked them, said, you, you got your outward covered.